Hello and welcome to another Woodworking Wisdom from Axe Mr. Tools. It's Tuesday afternoon. Um, if you've tuned in, expected fantasy figures. So sorry, Cole, Colin can be in, so you've got me instead. So we can just, uh, all right, okay, that's your fantasy bit done. All right, no more of that. Okay, so this builds on from last week a little bit. We last week looked at wider sharpening station for scary sharpening, stick down abrasive. We sharpened up a new hand plane blade and new chisel. And I mean, we got them. I love this. I don't know if I can go camera too, Craig. Let's have a look. Wow. Look at the reflection on that. Okay. A bit over the top for some of you, but that's like, ooh. Okay. That's seriously sharp. I'm going to put it back in here because I do have a reputation for having red lines. Okay. So when we did the hand plane blade, I tested this and we're going to put it back together for you in a minute. And we're going to show you this in the prime. At the end of last week's session, I said, I probably think we're going to have a problem. And yes, we did. We played around with a few things. We're going to explain what that problem is. So to give you a recap, we got our blade, our chip breaker. I know we need to just tighten that back up. All right. We're going to put it into our plane. So the plane is actually an old Stanley plane. Uh, my brother found this and said, I need a new blade for it. Can you set it up for me? which was great, apart from I wanted to put a slightly thicker blade in. So why are we going to go with thicker blade? It will be less chatter and vibration, better quality of steel. So all those things are going to add up, give him something that's a bit more user-friendly. I've screwed, cap screw down just a bit too tight, so bring it back. What I want to try and do now, let's see, I'm adjusting the plane, bringing the blade forward. I can use that thing a little bit and clashing just on the left hand side a bit so I'm going to adjust it bring it over winding forward I can use test block nearly there and this is trying to give you that recap of where I know the problem is I've come forward just starting to cut I can feel a bit of resistance but I know if I hold it up and there is some tiny tiny little shaving down the side minute just a sliver of the corner of the block. But if I hold this up, there is no daylight at all through the mouth and the front of the blade. If you watched last week's, you know I got to the bit where I said, maybe we can adjust the frog. So what did we do last week? We adjusted the two screws, wound it back. Didn't quite get to where we want, so we got those, wound it back. Still not enough room. All right, so let's give you... And overview a little bit of where the problem is. So we're just creating a little bit of room on the bench. I'm going to bring this in. So Craig, probably camera free, I think. So Craig's doing your questions and answer bits, guys. Let's bring this camera just back just a little bit for you and get this into to view. And I'm sorry this kind of looks the wrong way around for most of you, but I think you can turn your heads enough to go. This says mouth, which is this area. That's that bit on your plane. The gap. Frog. That's that bit down in there. So it's actually that right on your plane. So we get the gap in between is where the mouth is. Your blade comes in here. Now on the plane we've got, which is a Bailey style plane, we can move the frog about up and down. I've come back as far as I can go before you start to create a step on the bottom of the sole. All right, I'll show you this a bit closer in a second down in here. And the frog, do you bet they move back their independent units? You get a step created off the sole from where the frog steps back. You can only have it so big and it will interfere with the blade. So a blade in reality needs to be able to go in position. I'm just going to clamp this back in place so it makes my life easier. That there. We need something as a gap up this end. So when we cut our piece of wood, it will actually have room to go up through there. Hello. So this is curling around. Just about manage it with that bit of cardboard. That gives you the relationship of what the blade's doing. At the moment, I'm right at the front. So in reality, there is now not a gap here to get a shaving through. 
even the minutest, thinnest little shaving won't go. And some of you might want to make veneer a bit thicker. So we should be able to do both of those sort of cuts with the adjustment. So we really need to try and set this up so it'll do that cut. So I'm hoping you understand what your blade does there, why we haven't got that room. So in reality, at the moment, the blade is touching the front of the mouth, the casting. There's no room to get the shaving up through. It's as simple as that. So let's put my prop out of the way. We're going to bring our plane back in. We tried to do a little cut just with the little pine block. My original plan was to do it down through here. I know there's no room, so there's no point. I'm not going to show you anything, gain you anything. All right. So what do we need to do to the plane? We basically need to create a gap, make some room. So I'm going to get my vice in. I'm going to bring this in. Put it into there. That's why my location point, I think we need to be about there. So in reality, on our plane, we've already said we could try and adjust the frog. We're still going to move it a little bit in a minute. Okay, so we could adjust our frog back in. It's there. I want to open up the mouth. So this slot. You're not actually going to do any damage to your plane doing this. You'll give it a bigger gap. The advantage with going, as we said, with a thicker blade, it's a more modern metal probably. So it's more suited for what you're doing. It will be flatter. The old blades, actually, if you look at them, they're punched out and tend to be twisted a little bit. It will also absorb the chatter and vibration more. So, therefore, that will help you. All those little things add up. But it does mean you have to do just that little bit of work to your plane. So, what do we need to do? So, I've just put my glasses on. I need to open up that gap. Not by a lot. So, I put the vice in here. I've got parrot vice up on the bench makes it easier to hold. I was trying to figure out a way of holding this so you guys could see this and see what's going on. That's quite important for us. When you put this in here, I want to bring it back a little bit. Even in there a bit more. I'm trying to make sure I'm clamping on the side section of the sole, not on the side wings right up on here. I don't want to be clamping just there, putting pressure in, you run the risk or crack them. We need to be clamping right down on the bottom edge where it joins on the corner. So we put it in. I can angle it. This makes it easier for you to see, do it up, check things aren't going to move. I'm just going to play with camera free just a little bit. So great. can you just, that's good. We'll bring that in a bit. So you can see what's going on a bit closer there. Now we did do, and I measured, so great. probably back to camera one for a second. Oh no, blade. This blade is 2.9. That's not right. Let's go to zero. Open it up. That's better. 2.95, as in, all right, so 2.9 millimeters thick. A traditional Stanley blade that was in here is about 1.98, just under two mil, because they punch it out of two mil material, then they surface grind it, so you get under two mil thick as a blade. So we're gaining a millimeter. So in simple, I need to open my mouth up on the front by one mil. And on the front edge, not the back. That's quite important. So we're going to hand fire it. Not going to do a little, you know, not a lot of removal. I also want to create a little bit of angle coming back towards the front of the plane. That helps the shaving escape, give it clearance. I also want to keep it straight. Minor little things, isn't it? So we did this as a block of wood. All right, so camera three, I think, Craig. Let's have a look over his head there. Okay, got this block. Craig cut this out for me earlier. So the bit of plywood that comes down this direction where the pencil is, we've actually put a five-degree angle on it. So I can rock that square. All right, you can see I've got movement there. It's five degrees, no more. That'd be enough. Then we've joined the two bits together at a right angle. I can use this onto here. So it's given me something... Accurate. I can get my clamp in underneath the mouth. Which way can we go in better? Let's go. I think I put it in there earlier. We had it on here earlier. Got to go back in there then. That's it. It'll fit just inside where the front handle is. Bring it up. How much is a millimetre? Can we measure it and mark it up? I was wondering that earlier, and then I kind of went, maybe we could use a steel rule. Okay. So I'll still rule. 
one mil. That's what we want. So I can use this as a spacer. So if I take my stir rule and we add another one or something you could use as a stop bar, I can put it into the mill, slide it all up. That makes sense. So this one, the vertical, comes down in, slide that up. I've got a way then of making the square. The block, the pulley, we can clamp on. We know we're getting something square on the side. So we've got our one mil just over. Let's bring it back just a tiny bit. That's it. Clamp it up again. So you can see how simple we can set that up. Clamped in place. Good. We then need something as a weapon. What have we got as far as? I'll fix that one. That'll go. Now, just looking at my hand file I've got here, we have nothing on this edge. Then the other three edges have got a cutting face. So there's one clean face, non-cut, safe edge, if you like. So I can put my file in. Now, this is going to probably take a little bit of time. I've got to come in now. I've got to think about where the safe edge is. So on my right-hand side at the moment. So we furl it, we push it down. I'm not coming all the way across to the left-hand side. I don't want to open the width up anymore. I want to just basically stand that back. So keep the action moving. The plywood's going to give us something as an easy straight edge to follow. Push down, throw. Wouldn't believe that one mil of cast iron could be so tough, would you? Now, I did have slightly coarser foil, but it was a bit thicker for this. And someone in a minute, I can say, going to... I've got a second cut from what I can see on there. So maybe just a little bit fine, but it will do it. It'll give me a nice finish. Right, up, down. Here we're getting to. Getting there. If anything, there's a nice pile of waste appearing out the bottom at the moment. Okay, so I don't have to come up quite as high with my body angle. I'm going to chill things over just a little bit. In other words, I'm up here. I want to be a bit more comfortable. So, keep moving. I'm only doing a mill. A little bit to go there. That gives you the scope of what you can do. Now, the bit of plywood's obviously going to act as a straight edge. It will also help create a little bit of angle. I'm going to turn the file over because I want to do this corner. A quick look still a little bit there we're definitely getting bigger this is what we've taken off gives me a chance to get my breath back just a little bit right. keep it going work across the slot now i've got to remember i've got my cutting edge on the right hand side now i don't want to hit that right hand corner Left hand corner and come right into there. Just trying to see if I can get my finger through the other side of the file. It's a bit difficult how I'm holding it for you. Get in there, turn the file over. Have a quick look. See where we are. We're getting there. We're taking material out. I didn't promise it was going to be quick. A little foul. Let's go to there. A little bit coarser. That's a bit better. Might be smaller, but I think it'll get the job done. 
Again, it's got a safe edge. Turn them over. Safe edge is this side now. That's good. Back to longer one. Smooth things out a bit. Right, okay, nearly there. Put yourself on camera one, Craig, on. Right, hang on, let's just, just right, guys. Need more questions. Okay, sorry, right, okay, go on, Craig. Good afternoon, everybody. Jason, <laughs> need to break. That's why I've got questions coming in now. Um, right, so uh, Laz has asked, do you have a Stanley number one plane? No. No, okay. Okay. The number one is extremely rare. If you have them, can you please send them to me? Um, be lovely to have. Um, number one planes. Story from what I understand from years ago. This is good. I'll get my breath back. Okay. The number ones originally were more for the sales reps and never were really sold. They're quite unusual. The idea being, the number one actually, it's about the size of your block plane. Had a handle on the front and on the back. So you have a proper tote on the back, knob on the front. It looked like the plane we're dealing with, but obviously scaled right down. So the sales reps had them. They didn't have computers in those days, maybe not lots of printed material. So they actually have this little plane of this is what we can do. We do number one, number seven. Not interested. Thanks very much. Um, all right. They could carry it around, put it in their pocket. It didn't matter. It wasn't that big. Beautiful little plane. I'd love a number one. Okay, Craig? Yeah, Maria's commented that she thinks she'd be a bit nervous drastically altering a 100 to 200 pounds worth of plane. We're taking a millimeter off. Now, I'll give you the scope of, I've got a Lionelson number four in here that has the same thickness blade as what we're doing on here. Putting a three mil thick blade in. The mouth on the Lionelson number four is six mil wide, exactly the same as I'm doing now. So I'm going to make this six mil wide to go up to it. All right. If you've got your number one plane, no, I wouldn't go altering it too much. Leave it alone. It's a quite an unusual thing. So don't go altering that. If you've got a Stanley plane, you want a thicker blade in. So number four, five, which are quite common, quite easy to do to open this up. We can also, if you like the aspect, you want to close the mouth up when you're doing the cut to have more support to do that nice thin shaving stop the tearing we can move the frog forward we can still accommodate that as well even if you have an old blade and you want to put it back in there it will still work by bringing the frog forward to have the pressure on the front and the mouth so that's still going to work beautifully but if you've got something like the unusual number one no leave it don't touch it all right Craig, all right yeah, so um, just really to respond to Lawrence's comment there about trying to send some pictures to us, but um, didn't succeed. Guys, have you got any pictures, any photos, anything you want to share? Woodworking Wisdom, all one word, at axminstertools.com will find all four of us. So please, uh, let's, yeah, share away. Um, and Martin's just commented that he's uh, making some wizard's wands at the moment. So that'll please Ben. So thanks for sharing that, Martin. Okay, Jason. Okay, so, back to on fire, all right? Good, got my breath back a bit. So, now back three. Nearly there now. So, I did this to my number five. Probably, oh, let's think. I would have been about 14, 15. I did this with my work experience, the guy I used to do my work experience with from school. Quite a famous guy to go do it with as well. He used to live locally. Um, a guy called Tom Keeley make some amazing furniture so this is one of the things i would have done with a brand new number five to get it right so safe edge left hand corner that's all right now we're down to our block of ply nearly now just gonna little edge there so the only do about having this little five degree angle is allow the shavings out easier Quick look on where we are. That feels better. Okay. That's the final one. So just going to just shoot up just a little bit. 
just to get a bit more angle. Make sure I get everything so I'm working right over to the corner, the safe edge right in that corner. That's paramount you get a foul with three edges, not four. Because you don't want to widen the mouth. That looks good. Oh my god, I had it clean before it came on again. All right, so. Does it look very different? Have we really done anything where you're going to notice anything of any substantial damage that you... All right, looks pretty similar. Now, I'm hoping... I'm going to move this back out of the way. I will say, of all the videos we do, this is one of the ones where I haven't been able to rehearse because I've got one plane. So I really want to know, will it go back together? First thing, if I can find my brush, where's it gone? Not in that one. Down in there. We had interesting question from one of you a few weeks back, and I did answer. All right. Lily put an answer on, I think it was on the question sheet answer, about my tall storage boxes. And year after Christmas, I think we're going to look at, we'll go through a few of them, show you how they were put together. And then we might do something like one of the chisel boxes or a make project. Um, really love the fact that everything hangs on the wall and it's at, at hand in here, if you like, but also portable. So, our blade. We can still play around with a few things. Let's just undo there. I'm just going to bring this in. Let's just have a look quite where we are. Good there. Good bring that up to there. Thanks. That's great. Right. Going to bring that over. So our blade we did last week, we polished the bank. We leveled it up. You can see a few little lines coming through. Didn't take a lot of effort. This is quite nice because they arrived. They're quite flat. No, they're very flat. They were in, I think, something like five microns. Mark, who's in charge of getting these in, I asked about. So they're really flat as a thing goes. You still get a brush finish. But they're not bent and twisted. So that's a real advantage. Doesn't take too long to get it. All right. These are cut out, not punched out. Chip breaker goes on the top. So give you the scope of that because I have seen hand planes where the chip breaker's the wrong way around. You cut out, bevel edge. Turn it over, that's the back of the blade. Chip breaker is a spring piece of steel. And one of the things I haven't looked at, and I could I could do it actually, I'm gonna have to do it this way. But Craig, you probably need just to go to camera one for me. So on here. When I clamp the two together, I need to check they come together. So let's just put our screw in. I could do it up. The chip breaker is spring-loaded. One of the questions last week was how near to the front do you go? I kind of said as near to the edge of the world as you can get without falling off. A millimetre back will be fine. That's quite a long way back for some people, but a mill will be safe. You don't want it drifting over and hitting what you've just sharpened. So we've got our edge. I'm just going to put my glasses on, make sure it's there. I also want to hold it up. So when I hold it up, I'm looking through the angle. This where you get the little cut out, the hole from the spring bit down in here and checking I'm not getting any daylight from the front of the chip breaker and the blade. Tiny little bit. I'm going to let go from it. Now, I'm going to do a session where we do a big maintenance session on a hand plane. That's one of the things I'd look at. How can we flatten that back? Because they need to meet and touch all the way across. Anything else we've got on here? Everything else seems to be moving all right. The frog we've got positioned, I lined it up last week. One thing I haven't checked since then is, did we tighten these up? We did. Nice and firm. Tighten both. Double check them as well. Because obviously once you start tightening one down, it might affect the other. Frog we might still adjust in a minute, it's back in here, so we might play with that in a second. Blade can go in. First we want to check is everything seats all right. So where does cap iron screw needs to go into that recess? Very important it sits in there. You don't want to jar the blade too much when you're putting it in a nail. You don't want to go hitting it on a thing. I put it on a cork block or a piece of wood can be good. Check things move on the lateral. So let me just come forward a little bit. So right there, check your lateral movement works. Everything's engaging up on here. That looks good. Going to bring it back just a little bit. 
cap iron goes over the top. How tight does it need to be? Don't want it massively tight. Now I've got enough adjustment. I can bring this back just a little bit more. Too tight, you can't move it nicely. Too loose, it will move in use. But you should be able to, with a spring style cap iron, lock it on without adjusting it and take it off. Maybe still just a little bit. So I'll bring it back a touch. And it's important to adjust that nice. You get it to work because you need to be able to wind the blade forward nicely and adjust it. Those two things come into it. If it's too tight, you're never going to manage it. Then I'm going to turn it over. Our blade now seems to be sitting quite a long way up. It's out the front of the plane. That's good. Okay. So I'm playing with the lateral, or sorry, the blade adjustment mover. Now right here, I'm just going to move my cork block. So my fingers down in here can wind this back. Now if I wind it back, I then need to wind it forward. Take up the backlash. And depending on the maker plane, will determine how much backlash there is. Do you have an idea with this? Half. One. One and a half. Two. That's almost... Okay, almost three complete revolutions to get rid of the backlash. The backlash is caused by the amount of slop where the yoke or the adjuster fits into the groove. It's got to be something that will allow you to move it. If it's too tight, you're never going to adjust it. You get used to your own plane, how much you need to move stuff. Bring it forward. I'm doing less than quarter of a turn, and I know I've got quite a bit to come up. Winding forward, so the movement is pushing the blade down in the plane. It's also lo located on the right side of the yoke adjuster. So we haven't wound it back and left it. That's going to allow slop. So I've got to wind it forward to there. Now I'm just starting to get a cut. Good. Now, joy from my point of view, and this is going to sound like, okay, is the fact that I can see daylight between the front of the blade and the mouth, which means should work. Another thing on here, let's have a quick look, cutting a little bit there. Now last week we tried cutting this bit of wood and we could get nothing through that gap. I'm a bit too heavy with my cut, so I'm going to bring it back. Wow, what a lot. Too much, bring it back up then. Okay. I reckon I've got a little bit too much light on here, so it's moving too easy. I'm just going to tighten that quarter turn. Things like that can be done, little adjustments. Bring it up. Now I'm adjusting to test my cut. Most of you, if you've tuned in regularly, will know I'm a great fan of a little bit of wood, piece of timber, scrap block of something to set it up with instead of going straight on to that really important job. This allows you to get either side, get it equal. Wound it back a lot, didn't I? Look. Okay. Pick it up. A little bit more there. Nothing the other side. So I can play with my lateral. And then what I'm really trying to do on this is check everything will function. We put a slightly thicker blade in. I need to check the lateral movement is engaging and that the yoke will push the blade forward. Now on this, it's managing. Get there, a little bit that side now, nothing on the other. So I'm playing around with the lateral lever down underneath. And you can see why maybe setting up with something like this can be so much easier than going straight into that important job. So you want to get the blade square, level there, a little bit that side. Get used to how it functions. Turn the plate upside down. This can be good. Keep your fingers out of the way. Yes, it will trim them. And there, body weight. And there, that's cutting. Not only is that cutting, get beautiful lacy type shaving, nothing too heavy. We've got a gap, it's clearing nicely. That little bit of angle we put on the inside of the mouth is allowing the shaving to come back away from. The shaving is clearing the chip breaker, not clogging underneath it. So that means it's definitely supported with that chip breaker on the back of the blade. Nice and easy to do. Works beautifully. Let's see if we can come back a little. And come forward again. Now this plane might need, and one thing I've never checked on this, how flat is the plane? Um, that's better though. We couldn't do that or anything near that last week. That's beautiful to see, you get a nice shaving. 
quite a joy to do, get that, that light shading. Now, to give you an idea on here, I can get, let's go with a bit I've cut on the side, that piece of cardboard down through that mouth. You can see the gap. There was no mouth when we started this session. Maria kind of right. if you've got something as a really valuable plane, then you want to try and make sure you keep that. Don't go altering it. Number ones, like I say, are rare. Uh, if you've got more than one of them, I, 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 maybe one day. Are you married? Okay, no. So on here then, if you get problems with, and this one I, I played around with, it's a bit of an idea, and I have done this in the past. Craig, can we just go to camera three? On the chip breaker, which sits on the back of the blade, on here, get that slot. That has got to locate on the yoke movement on here. Now, depending on how short they've actually ground that in the factory, it has to come through the thickness of the blade into the chip breaker. If it won't, the only way I can see of getting around it is to cut a little slot either side here. And I've done this in the past, a little diamond wheel, and push this down a tiny bit. It's minute. Most of us get too carried away. So I've got a little diamond wheel, we do to approximate, bit, and we cut that slot. So it can be good to do if you need it. But something like this, I put that in as a standy plane. We've got it set up. We know it will function. All right. So quite easy to adjust and a nice way of upgrading your plane. All right. Let's have a quick look down here. So Craig, let's go back to one, I think, really. I knew this wasn't going to take loads and loads of time. Lots of hand filing, a bit messy. We haven't, I don't think, really done anything to alter that plane very dramatically, apart from make it usable with a thicker blade. The joy with that thicker blade, it will obviously absorb the vibration better. It's flatter, better quality still, so it'll cut better. All those little things add up for one millimetre removal on the mouth. All right, so hopefully, give me a bit of an insight. I knew this was going to be the shortest session day because of what it is, how much hand filing there is. Craig, you got any more questions? No? Okay. Ben's in tomorrow. He's doing some work on the Tormek T4 grinder. Uh, if you've got any questions on the Tormek or the Whetstone stuff, let us know. Colwyn hopefully will be back in on Thursday with his fantasy figures. The lottery numbers maybe, Colwyn. Can you help me? So, we will see you tomorrow. Thanks very much then. Bye-bye. So, if you like this, give us a thumb up.